Hi everyone, I'm Eric, and today we'll be continuing to learn number theory. Now, today's number theory will be considering factorization and the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Now, in order to prove this fundamental theory, I have to prove a couple of other theories first. So this will be the first theory that we encounter. Let p be a prime number, and let p can, uh, uh, and we'll say that p can divide the product a times b. Then p, then either p divides a or p divides b or p divides both a and b. Now you guys might say that this doesn't even need a proof, but in fact it does. Since if p is not a prime number, let's say if p is six, and it can divide. A product a and b, let's say three times four, twelve. But six can neither divide three nor divide four. So this seemingly very obvious theory actually a theorem actually needs a proof. So in order to prove this, let's say p can either divide b or p cannot uh, p can either divide a or cannot divide a if b can divide a then we do not need any more proof so let's say p cannot divide a and if p cannot divide a then the gcd of p and a is either 1 or p but it can't be p since then p would be able to divide a so it must be 1 and if we do that we can connect to the last lesson and have px plus a px plus a y equals 1 and let's now multiply both sides by b to get ppx plus a b y equals b now oh, it's it's pretty obvious why p can divide pbx and why p can divide aby. Well, the assumption is that p divides the product ab, and ab is over here. So p can divide aby, and if it can divide both these numbers, then there's some. Uh, p can also divide their sum, and their sum is b. So we have to finish the proof. This is a slightly but almost the same theorem. It states that p is a prime number and p can divide the product a1 times a2 all the way to ar and then p divides at least one of these numbers. Now it's, 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 we're just used the same method from before. If p can divide a1, we need no further proof. Now let's say that p cannot divide a1 and if p cannot divide a1, then p can divide a2 times a3 all the way to ar since we have proved this theorem. And in this case, a is a1 and b is all these numbers. And p cannot divide a, which is a1. And so p must divide b, which is this whole number. And then we continue improving like that until we stop in integer a i that p can divide a i and then once we find a i we have finished the proof now we had came to the fundamental theorem of arithmetic every single integer a is greater or equal to 2 can be factored into a product of n equals p1 times p2 all the way to pr where there are primes. And there's only one way of factoring them. So first we'll prove that can that this number n it can be factored into primes and then we'll prove the other assertion that there is only one such factorization. So we'll prove the first assertion with I will prove the first assertion with three big steps. 
The first step is to prove small numbers, small numbers, and the second step is to let let the theorem work until n, and then once we prove n plus one also works, we finish the proof. So it's basically dividing a rectangle. We first prove this small section, and then we take the assumption that it works all the way until n. And then once we prove another little section outside of this barrier, then we had finished the proof. So first we'll have three small numbers, two, three, and four. Two, three are both primes, and we don't need no further proof. And for four, four is two squared, and that's it. Four is two squared. Two is a prime. Now, then let's take the assumption that this theorem, that this assertion, one, works all the way until n. And now let's prove that n plus one also works. And there are two probabilities for n plus one. The first probability is that n plus one is a prime and we, know, we need no further proof. And as for n plus one is not a prime, then it can definitely be divided into two numbers, n1 and n2, where n, they're both smaller or equal to n. And our assertion works because they're smaller or equal to n. So let's say that n1 is p1 times p2 all the way to pr, and then n2 is a, a q1 times q2 all the way to q s and uh, they are both prime factorizations and it's n1 times n2 so it's those prime, prime factorizations multiplied together so n plus 1 also works and we had finished the proof on to assertion 2 there's only one such factorization aside from rearranging because we do not want to complicate matters. Now let's say that there are two such factorizations with n, either p1, p2, all the way to pr, or q1, q2, all the way to qs. Now we can see that p1 will divide n and thus p1 will divide this thing. And if p1 divides the products of all these numbers, then p1 needs to divide at least one of these numbers, and let's say it's qi. And then we rearrange this to make qi the first, first term. And now we have p1 divides q1. And q1 is also a prime which means that q1's only factors are one and q1. And since p1 is also prime and it can divide q1, we have p1 is equal to q1. And if we divide p1 from both sides, then we're left with p2, p3, all the way to pr, q2, q3, all the way to qs. And if we continue improving like this, we will finally get this. So n have two arrangements, p1, p2, all the way to pr. The second arrangement being q1, q2, all the way to qs. And p1 is equal to q1. p2 is equal to q2, all the way to pr is equal to q s and we have finished the proof for session two and in this chapter we we leave two questions that we will answer later the first question how can we tell if a given number n is prime or composite second question being if n is a composite number how can we do a prime factorization for it now the second question it's actually how we usually make very complicated passwords nowadays. So we choose two extremely big primes and we multiply them together to get one even bigger number and that will be the password. And 
Then, when someone tries to break the password, we ask them, what do primes make up this number? This number, and it will be very, very hard for them to actually calculate which two primes. So that will be enough for today, and we'll see you next time.